but it's fine. Yeah, I just woke up and um, with the passion to help farmers, then there comes, it's my duty to make them informed and help them make informed decisions and help them run their farms into profit uh, making businesses. My name is Dr. Paul Kangede. I am a veterinary surgeon by profession. But I decided to pursue journalism just to make sure that the information that is in the hands of the vets reaches down to the farmer, as well as the information that is in the agriculture space to trickle down to the farmer, to help the farmer make informed decisions. And most importantly, that the farmer may be able to run their agribusinesses in a way that is going to earn them profits and earn them livelihoods. There are several breeds that are in the dairy farming space. Uh, and these dairy breeds include, but are not limited to, Jersey, uh, Frasian, Gansey, and Asia. So these four are the main that people have. Others are crosses between the, these uh, cross breeds, and I mean between these pure breeds and other indigenous uh, cattle. So for a farmer, uh, really, I, I do not really focus, I would not advise a farmer to focus on, on uh, maybe a, a particular breed. But they should be able to narrow down to production per day, because that is where the business is. Because uh, for a farmer keeping any of the above mentioned breeds, and they are giving them three liters of milk, be it a fresh and for example, you are not in business. Why? Three liters of milk if you multiply, that cow cannot feed itself. That cow cannot even be able to acquire the veterinary services. There are people in the farm who need uh, to be paid, maybe the, uh, the farm hand and uh, the suppliers and people like that. But for you to say you are in a uh, dairy business, your cow should at least be able to give you 20 liters every day. And since a cow is in production for around three and, 305 days every year, by the cow coming on heat once per year and giving you a calf per year, then the period of time your cow is supposed to be in milk is around 305 days or thereabout. And therefore, you as a farmer should be able to make sure that you are earning at least from that cow 20, 25 liters, 20, 25 liters on the minimum. But there are other, some other breeds that can take you even up to 50, 60, depending on how you take care of that animal. But any animal that is below 20 liters, if it is then a single cow, then you are not in business. Then there is also the issue of numbers, because you may be having just a single cow, which then uh, may be even producing 60 liters of milk, but you are not in business as well. Why? Because there are so many bills to be paid. But with numbers, say you have uh, maybe 10 to 20 to 30 cows, but starting from 10, for example, then you are able to have a very good business case. Why? Because while, while some cows are in the dry period, some are giving birth and others are coming on heat and are being served. Therefore, your consistency of production is across board. The whole year you are in production. The breeds, therefore, you focus on the production per day, whatever the breed is, but some, other have, some have advantages over the others. For example, the jersey, the butterfat content is higher than the rest of them about 3.5% uh, uh, going up. Uh, and they also, they just also feed on small amount of, of uh, feed, uh, given that they are small body sized. Therefore, you start a better chance of uh, getting, if they are getting you to the 20 and the milk is uh, quality, then you, you stand a better chance. As compared to say, Frasian, which is eating too much, and then maybe giving you the same amount. So on, 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 uh, when you do your cost-benefit analysis, you find that it would be more profitable for you to raise jerseys than to raise uh, Frasians. But now they are, each has advantages over the other. And therefore, you need to seek that information as a farmer to find what are the advantages of one, the advantages of the other, and therefore you can make informed decisions. You cannot talk of dairy farming 
without feeding your animals. Because the milk you are getting is from what you fed the cows. The, cow, the quality of cows you are getting is what you are feeding uh, your, your cows. You cannot talk uh, about being a dairy farmer without you first having in mind how are you going to sustainably feed your animals with products that are nutritious, yet cost effective. So for those who are in, the, uh, in zero grazing, then you desire to have maybe other facilities where you have done your fodder and where you have done your, your maize, for example, for silage and millet and other things that you can do for silage, just to make sure that you have enough. And uh, I have visited farms where they just use uh, silage, uh, well-prepared silage from, from maize at the right age when it's just about to uh, uh, mature. Yeah, and you cut that, it's very nutritious, you can give your animals that. As well as you supplement with um, hay, good quality hay of course, from a, 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 a reliable source. Then with that then you just need to do supplementation of uh, minerals, for example, uh, dicalcium phosphate. This uh, supplies the, uh, enough quantities of calcium, because you imagine you are milking the cow every day and milk is rich in calcium. So you are drink from, drawing from your cow a lot of calcium every milking and therefore you want to replace that. So you feed uh, your uh, cow, you supplement every day with uh, dicalcium phosphate. Uh, other people then co go ahead to use some concentrates. How the quality of the concentrates depends then on where you are getting it from. There are some commercial uh, companies or commercial feed companies which make this but then they are also available, uh, also available are formulas you can use just to buy the raw materials and mix. Then you need an expert to engage on that. Just make sure that whatever you are making is helpful for your cow and you are not uh, putting too much energy or too much protein because each uh, production level of the animal, the calves, the heifers and those that are in milk, then they are those producing 10 liters. They are those producing 20 liters. They are those producing that, that liters. They have different... Uh, uh, quantities to be fed and uh, the amount then of concentrates to feed your animal then uh, there is a formula for that because uh, uh, and we say it is x minus 5 divided by 2 to give an example to make it very easy for a cow that is producing 20 liters of milk then you take x as 20 I mean the total production in a day 20 to be to be the total 20 minus 5 becomes 15. Then you divide by 2, you get 7.5. 7 so these 7.5 kilograms of concentrates or dairy meal is what you will feed your cow in a day. So you can divide 2.5 kilos in the morning, 2.5 kilos uh, midday, and then 2.5 kilos uh, at the end of the day. And sometimes milking your cow several times a day increases their milk production by 15%. Therefore, if your cows are well fed, if you are milking twice a day, you milk three times a day. And I always say that cows are animals of routine. If you are used to milking your animals at say 7, 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. or even 5 a.m., you stick to 5 a.m. If then the next milking is around midday, noon, sharp, your cows are ready and in the, around the milking para, ready to be milk. In the evening, it's around 4 or 5, then you make sure that uh, you do it at that time. And why I advise farmers to be feeding their animals uh, the, the last meal of the day area before, before it's, night, uh, it's night, just to make sure that in case your animals are maybe having a brot or something, you are able to uh, get, capture that maybe an hour after your animals are fed. Therefore, if you feed your animals around 8 p.m., 9, you will not realize that they are going to brot. Why? Because you fed them into the night. But if you are able to do that earlier in the day, say around 5, or uh, four, the last milking and then you feed the animals, that uh, is, is a perfect scenario. So therefore, f uh, feeding your animals right will make sure that you have consistent production, will make sure that you have healthy calves, it make sure you, you have healthy heifers, and these calves and heifers are your replacement animals. They are going to get into the next, they are the generation that is going to be the next milking animals. Therefore, you want to raise them right to be better than their mothers. Because if the daughter is uh, producing less than the mother, then you are not in business. It should be better. Yeah? And that is where now uh, technologies like artificial insemination comes in to make sure that you are using a good breed uh, to inseminate your animals and the 
animal already was good enough and therefore the daughter becomes better and then the following generations becomes uh, good enough. But for farmers who are getting into that space then milk production you, you, we, uh, always assumes a, a curve. Yeah? The first lactation is not too much. After the second lactation, the milk production increases. The third lactation increases. Again, the fourth is the peak. And then after the fifth lactation, it is starts to drop. So if it is an animal that has given you, say, around four or five calves, you start thinking of carrying it from your farm because then the production of that cow uh, is not as good as that one in the third lactation. Therefore, you have already heifers in place just to make sure that they are going to come in to replace the ones that are getting out. The vet has explained the importance of keeping your heart healthy. More milk production, healthy cows means a quick conversion to the next generation, but there are other elements that would directly affect your animal's welfare. For example, housing. In dairy farming, housing is a critical aspect of the whole process just to make sure that all things are going right. You want to afford your animals comfort that all the processes that they are supposed to do, you leave them with no other business apart from producing your milk for you and growth, if it is uh, the case of calves and, and heifers. So some of the uh, critical aspects to consider when uh, you're doing your animal housing is uh, how many animals you want to keep because that uh, becomes important to avoid uh, cases of uh, overstocking or overcrowding because when you bring too many animals together if one of them falls sick then uh, there is issue of uh, cross infection between uh, your herd and therefore you do not want such an instance to occur others may just be because of the small confinement and the spaces retro spaces they have they may just be fighting around and even failing to spend time to even feed and even when they are fed, they will stand most of their time standing up and fighting and these things. And you find that your animals are not even lying down. And animals spend approximately 60% uh, of their time lying down. Just to make sure that they regurgitate, chew card, and uh, that is when they are making milk for you. So you want most of your, uh, you want to construct your house in such a way that your animals are just lying down and, and doing their thing as it were. So uh, also security is very important to make sure that your precious uh, and expensive animals, someone doesn't just come and, and run away with them without you knowing. So you should have, uh, you should secure your ha animal housing, just making sure that the, the facility itself, the zero grazing unit has a, a, a single gate, just make sure that lockable, uh, no one can access without permission. Now, when it comes to uh, construction, the cost of construction be, uh, becomes very key because this is an investment and if it is your farm, uh, the size of land then you you considering, then with the number I had just mentioned about, uh, we, we agreed that then uh, with 10 animals producing each 20 liters, you are in dairy business. And therefore, in this case, then you want to afford them some comfort. Uh, 100 by, by 100 would be enough or even 100 by 50 just to do a very nice zero grazing unit whereby the zero grazing unit on, is on the lower floor and then above it you, you can have even your stores. And in this facility you construct with the available materials, say uh, even timber or even uh, iron sheets. But if you can, you can use even metal and uh, use, use stones, yeah? just to make sure that uh, your animals are comfortable. And in the confinements where the animals are living uh, or sleeping, you can... Uh, uh, buy some mattresses to make sure that your animals are just sleeping down. They are available just to make sure that uh, they are well, uh, they sleep, they spend most of their time sleeping down or lying down just to make sure that they produce enough. And when it comes to, to drainage, then you should ensure that there is some level of gradient in your, in your zero grazing unit just to make sure that the urine from the animals then flows into a pit somewhere to make sure that there is no um, there is no mess that as it were and then you routinely clean the press maybe in the morning and in the evening and then you can be washing once a day 
that that would make some very good uh, neat press just to keep off flies and some funny insects that could uh, bring diseases into into your farm and then uh, the facilities uh, like uh, the feed troughs should be easily cleaned and be spacious enough for your animals and then the water troughs they should also be easily to be cleaned you can even use tiles they sometimes help uh, they they usually help to make the water code and as well as it easy to clean a, a, a tiled uh, water tank so animal welfare is very important and that becomes uh, good housing becomes a very important aspect in ensuring that your animals are comfortable uh, they are getting uh, facilities for feeding and watering on time and they are also able to interact with one another. And in housing again, uh, you group the calves together just to help them run a few things or run the way of life, groom, them, groom each other every now and then, as well as the animals, just to bond. You know, because then when you keep uh, animals in solitary confinement, then you are denying them their rights of associate, I mean their freedom to associate with, with each other. And even the calf pens are just immediately next to uh, the unit, just to make sure that once you milk the cow, you feed the calf when the milk is still hot, just to make sure that uh, the animals are growing very well and there are no any incidents of disease. Junior, when I get Junior, then I... Outside of names, yeah. Chicago, Jacob, Larry, these are the animals. If I want uh, the breeding record, I go again, I go to the breeding, you tell me these are the animals. And that's the date when they're supposed to be steamed up, then they're supposed to be on, uh, to be ready for calving, you tell me all that record. Records becomes a very important aspect of uh, livestock production, not necessarily dairy, but any livestock uh, enterprise. Why? Because there are uh, about uh, five or six sets of records that a farmer should have. One is the breeds, on breeds and breeding. Number two, it is on feeds. Number three, on uh, disease management. Number four, financials and then lastly the marketing and other things you are doing records are like um, evidence in a court of law without evidence you cannot be able to execute any case even me as a vet i cannot even the uh, the questions we talk with the animals yes but there are information that you as the owner can be able to tell uh, only you can be able to tell me because i can know how the, the animal is feeding what is going on with the animal but what happened yesterday what the animal ate and what has been happening previously i cannot know unless there are concrete records that are true that are correct and up to date be because without such records then we are not we cannot be able to do much and then you should be having records of whatever is happening in your farm on a daily basis either on on a, different uh, sheets of paper you can buy it's easy to keep records you can buy a four choir or a five choir and then you segment on production you have a single page for every cow and then a few pages later you have uh, feed re feeding records then you have treatment records on when uh, the animals did what the production records on the tags and things like that when the animal was served the breed that it was served with all those things uh, uh, pregnancy uh, diagnosis date by the vet and uh, things like that so that you are able to plan. And without those records, then you'd not know when your animals are calving, when you need to, to uh, for example, uh, dry them off or uh, take them out of production to help, uh, to give time to the calf to mature fully. So th those are some of the uh, reasons why a farmer needs very concrete uh, uh, records at their farm. SWOT analysis, the strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats analysis for the dairy business some of the strengths are that the industry is growing and therefore whatever the amount of milk we produce the demand is so high that uh, it is insatiable people are coming on board your neighbors uh, you people on your phone uh, people in towns hotels institutions hospitals schools the demand for milk is ever there some of the weaknesses now of the dairy business is that if you're not careful and your animals fall sick or the housing is not good. Uh, disease challenge is one of the most common challenge in uh, dairy farming, especially mastitis. And this is uh, due to poor housing. 
but if you are able to make the house right, use a nice mattress, have good drainage for your cows, and then after feeding, uh, after milking, you make sure you feed them. Because the, the, the science behind it is that once you milk your cow and feed it, the, uh, the, the, the pore where the milk was coming from, as you milk, this, uh, this, the muscles are able to cross by the time the cow is finishing to, to feed. And therefore, once it's drying down, that pore has already crossed, and therefore the bacteria from the ground cannot be able to contaminate the, or gain access into the udder. And therefore, by doing that, you are able to control these diseases. Others include having good biosecurity systems, where people can have food birds as they are coming to your farm and out, change of crowd as they are coming out, and, and basically not allowing just anybody to come to your farm, see your animals without knowing where they are coming from. Because they could be coming out from a place where there is a disease incidence, for example, foot and mouth disease. And when such a disease comes to your farm, then you rest assured that uh, your farm then you are into disease. And disease is ex very expensive. Why? There is loss of production because that cow will be producing less than the amount. And it takes just a single day to, for a cow to they have a decline in production. But to get back to former production, it may take even three weeks plus. So you see, and then the care, the veterinary input, all that, someone take care of the animal. It's, a disease is very expensive to a farm. Other opportunities now that are available in this uh, dairy space are there opportunities for value addition. And uh, what is value addition? Uh, you could be making your yogurt. Of course, uh, you, you need a certification from Kenya Dairy Board just to uh, make sure that, that you are doing things the right way. Uh, also, you will need uh, some licenses from the county just to make sure you are not doing illegal business, you know, so that you can even take your product to the market. Uh, they have a CABS certification. And then once you start doing that, then you are in uh, good business. Alternatively, you can even start a small hotel. Because if a liter of milk is retailing at, say, 50 liters, and you can use the same liter of milk to make 10 cups of tea, each at 50 bob, you see? You, that's value addition, just do mandazis and some other maybe cakes and things like that. And you make money, even from, from your farm uh, as well. Alternatively, you can also link up with the institutions that are around you, hospitals, uh, uh, schools, colleges, yeah? And then you have already market for your, uh, for your business. Last but not least, agrotourism. Just if you have a well set up farm, people can just be coming to see your animals, how you are raising them, and you teach them a few things of how you do your business. And I know of a farm where you pay 5,000 per day just for you to visit. Yeah? And you are just going to see the animal, there is nothing you are buying. So if you have, say, 10 visitors on a nice weekend, that's 50k. It will help you pay the farmer, do a few things, buy a few feeds, pay the vet, you know, by just having a nice set of farm where people can just come and run. But of course, you must make sure that where people are coming in and going out, you have very tight security, biosecurity systems to make sure that there are no diseases coming to your farm. Because if that happens, then you, you are spoiling everything that you have been doing so far. Now, for the threats of, of, of the industry, uh, there are instances where you hear maybe uh, products are, are coming from outside the country and then the farmers are complaining. But there is not so much you can do about that because that's politics in another level. Now, for the farmer at your level, you have to keep the vision of why you started the dairy business. And if you are re having even uh, employees, you make sure you train them on the right way to do things. Because if anything go wrong, you come changing employees every now and, uh, every now and then. Diseases are coming in again, you see. So some of those things then will make sure that we read to your farm corrupting. Yeah? And of course, uh, other things like even uh, uh, an epidemic, for example. Say abortions in your farm and things like that. Those are threats. And therefore, that is why you need to engage a vet to take you through the ABCs of health to make sure that your farm, there is no disease coming in, the feeding and all that are taken care of, and your business is running well. And if there is anything that is going out of the norm, then with the, the expert, then you can re-engage and, and ask yourself, where did we go wrong? This is how we performed last month, this is where we are going. Then you are able to move together with an expert to guide you on how to move forward with your business. And, and until then, you can earn some, some nice profits.